It's official. Brooklyn Park has a new police chief. The city council approved Mark Bruley as chief on Monday. Reporter Sonia Goins has more on what's ahead for the new leader. I'm excited and I'm humbled. Mark Bruley has been with the Brooklyn Park Police Department since 1995. He says he's always been passionate about serving the community. 27 years ago, I just wanted to be the best police officer I could be when I came to this community. But Bruley will have to tackle some challenging issues. Currently, the city is dealing with an increase in gun violence. Topic number one for me is gun violence, and uh, we have to change up our strategies, and we are doing that. If you choose to victimize this community with gun violence, we are coming after you. His plan also includes working more with community groups like Minnesota Acts Now. Last year, the organization started having a presence at high crime areas in the city. We've seen a drastic decrease in gun violence at those intersections. We've seen them connect with uh, youth and, and young adults and get them off the path of violence. Hiring a more diverse police force that's reflective of the city's population is also on his agenda. Many of the qualified candidates come from the police cadet program. We're projected to have double digit increases in uh, our sworn ranks of people of color serving this community very soon. As for his personal life, Bruley has a wife and three sons. This is video from 2018 when CCX News spent time at his home. I'm family man first uh, to be honest with you. Um, that's what makes me tick. When the top cop isn't reeling in bad guys. He's casting a line for bass, walleye, and crappies. Bruley practically grew up with a fishing rod in his hands. Well, I got to have a break, right? I got to go recharge my batteries. And for me, that's definitely the outdoors and fishing. The city leader says he's looking forward to the next chapter in his career. I love this community. My blood, sweat, and tears are here for 27 years. I couldn't be prouder being here, the police chief, and uh, leading us through the next chapter of, of policing with our community. In Brooklyn Park, Sonia Goins, CCX News. Brooklyn Center has approved a temporary moratorium preventing new businesses from selling THC products. The issue has dominated discussion in many recent city council meetings throughout the northwest suburbs. In Brooklyn Center's case, a moratorium would last for one year, allowing the city to study regulatory and safety issues. The discussions stem from a state law approved July 1st, which allows hemp-derived products containing limited amounts of THC, the chemical that produces a high in marijuana. While there are regulatory and safety concerns, some also see the issue as an opportunity. Because I do think that staff will look at it as both an opportunity to um, make sure that we're being smart, but also... Um, I thought, you know, small businesses, ways we could leverage and also bring more business to the city. Council member Abel Graves mentioned THC product sales could be similar to Brooklyn Center liquor stores, which pass along some of the sales tax revenue to city recreation services. Meanwhile, Brooklyn Park is discussing whether to relax its ordinance related to the storage of garbage cans. It led to a lengthy discussion Monday night that included plenty of resident feedback. But surprisingly, I've been seeing things around. People leave their garbage outside. Their yard is full. You think that changing this code will modify the behavior? No, you're not going to modify the behavior by changing a code. There's a reason I chose not to live in a townhome association, too. And that's I don't want nitpicking about everything. Uh, I don't want my neighbors to go through all of that. Brooklyn Park is considering allowing waste containers to be stored unscreened along the side of homes. Currently, they must be fully screened or stored in a garage or backyard. Some believe the proposed change would help people with physical limitations or those with limited garage space. City officials say responding to trash storage complaints takes up considerable staff time. But city leaders have struggled with finding a solution. I'll be honest, this has been the most phone calls, emails I've gotten on any issue, and it really is sort of both sides. A vote to change the ordinance ended in a 3-3 tie. It's expected to come back for another vote when all council members can be present. In the restaurant industry, you always want to serve good food, but it also helps if you have top-notch customer service. In this week's edition of Takeout Tuesday, we check out Papa's Cafe, a small diner in New Hope with a big heart. Good morning. Hi. How are we doing today? Breakfast is considered by many as the most important meal of the day. And for more than 20 years, Doug Starica has been serving up large portions of delicious food to a loyal base of customers. I have people I see twice a day sometimes, every day. And it's like, how do you not 
Love that. <laughs> Doug is the longtime owner of Papa's Cafe. It's a small restaurant in New Hope, mainly specializing in breakfast food that's been in the family since 1994. My parents bought this, said, hey, you want to cook? I'm like, yeah, I can do that. I mean, I bartended and bus tables and stuff when I was younger, so I'm like, yeah, I think I can give it a shot. And here I am 20-something years later. When you run a restaurant for that long... How would you like your eggs done? It's easy to develop relationships with the regulars. It feels like cheers. Folks like Charlie Melsha, yeah. who come in week after week to enjoy a meal served by a group of friendly and familiar faces. It's down to earth, you know. There's, uh, we love the waitresses. We've got Aaron, Laura, and Becky. The service, I come in every Thursday night, and they're, one of them is here. Yet the service only tells part of the story. Do you want water as well? This New Hope Diner is a go-to spot because customers can enjoy a tasty meal for a good price. Sounds good. I'll see you in a little bit. It also doesn't hurt that they make the claim of having the best pancakes around. <laughs> Lots of sugar. <laughs> Buttermilk, sugar, just really. It's just the high sugar content and just knowing how to cook them. Good food, an old school feel, and a family-like atmosphere that customers say you won't find at a chain. This beats chain restaurants all the heck, and uh, they need more of them. While the menu remains fairly standard during the week, the owner says he likes to get creative on weekends and offer specials with locally sourced ingredients.